Right, you ready, Danny boy? I've been ready all my life. Oh, amazing. Hello there, and welcome to the grand final of ESL Go4 Cup Week 7. You're currently watching Joe Soviets. He is the Eastern player on Kolodny Firma against Lovnest, the imperious and dominating Lovnest, the German as Wehrmacht. And uh, we're in the final. I'm with Dan. And uh, what commanders do you see, Dan? Well, um, I would say uh, we've got interesting ones from Jove and a pretty basic, you know, standard one from Loveness. Loveness is playing well within his comfort zone. He has German Mechanized, which he used last week to very, very good effect. I think he used that to win the finals as well. Mobile Defense, which is the fail-safe doctrine to have in everybody's loadout at the moment to defend against an aggressive Tier 3. And uh, Lightning War, which I really, really like. Lightning War is a very, very powerful commander. Uh, very good abilities there. Interesting commanders come in from Jove. We have Soviet Industry, Lendlease, and also Guard Motor. Three very, very powerful commanders indeed. Um, I would actually say that Industry becomes quite viable here because there's nothing to uh, for Ostia to take down the planes dropping the fuel in. So you can actually play uh, more of a vehicle strategy. You could either go Tier 4 or you could... Um, you know, there's tons of options, basically, uh, for how you can bring fuel in, uh, and there's lots to play with. So I'd be very interested to see what he goes for. It, of course, all depends on the next five minutes as to uh, how how players feel confident with the commanders they're picking. Looks like Great Micro from Jove escaping the conical arc of fire of the MG42 and making it into the garrison, the all-important munitions garrison, one of the most important garrisons in Covenant Heroes 2. Elsewhere, he's going to be capping up the wet the south with his combat engineers. He's gone for a conscript orientated build, Dan. Yep, three cons so far, so fairly standard. Doesn't give any clues as to what's going on just yet. Uh, fourth might suggest industry, but uh, things have been changing with that, obviously, uh, with industry. I think there's still a lot of uh, early game build combination Soviet commanders that are still yet to come out. Um, obviously, four is. is, is uh, or even of lend lease as well. Do we have tier two? Oh, no, we don't. I mean, also, yeah, that could suggest a Dushka. Um, Sniper out from Lovnest, as you would expect from the German. He's also managing to take this big cutoff, and he does have the victory point in the centre as well, so this is a full cutoff. Jove is uh, postulating for some kind of entrance into the game right now. He's ha having to take this garrison and uh, demote one of his conscripts to being mere squatters. Slow, slow early game we're familiar with with high players. Four cons! Ooh. Hey, this is interesting now. I think we can start to get a bit of idea of what's going to happen. KV2 uh, hype! <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I. I I think it'd be nice for Jove to showcase that. It's not actually a bad commander at all at the moment. It's really good. Since they removed the manpower penalty and made it like optional kind of um, in regards to airdrops, it's a really cool commander in my opinion. Oh, Molly's um, upgraded for Jove. Interesting. G42 opening up on conscripts. He actually makes a full retreat instead of using the conscripts in the garrison to try and flank, and that is indicative of, of trying to keep the Wehrmacht away from their munitions point. You don't want to let the munitions uh, bottleneck faction have munitions, obviously. Opens you up to a lot of uh, MG. Oh my god, Loveness uses the sniper. What? Was that from garrison fire? Yeah, the Jove just hopped out of the church, Urad in, stopped, and instantly, it actually looked like the sniper couldn't move. It was being blocked in by the grenadiers, but straight away, honestly, like three shots from the rifles and that sniper was dead. Unreal. I mean, I had it on my screen, the, the viewers did see it, but I've got to be honest, I did not expect it, and I was just, you know, I was shocked as much as Love Nest was. Jove managed to use Moz and Nagats to take out a sniper there. Absolutely brutal win there. The GGs are already rolling in from the chat. I think the chat's uh, yeah, not, you know, they're going to be pretty phased by that loss, to be honest. Uh, that's a big one to come back from, but Loveness is going to go in straight with the second sniper. Yeah, they can be very useful, uh, especially against four conscripts. Needs to make sure that that positioning mistake does not happen again. K 
Okay then, so Jove has his flamethrower up as combat engineers, Loveness has rebuilt his sniper. Um, so you'll already begin to see that, that um, Jove's army size will start to dwarf that of Loveness. More in terms of actual units on the field rather than pop cap, of course. Tier 2 is also down for Jove, and a Maxim is about to hit the field, which is uh, a good decision, I think. This kind of removes Lendlease, perhaps, as one of the viable commanders, unless, of course, he does lose a lot of fuel in the uh, early game to Loveness. That's looking quite unlikely at the moment. Yeah, he won't be using Lendlease now, mate. It's all about the Dushkas with Lendlease, in my opinion. A little bit, yeah. I mean, if you're not getting fuel and stuff, the, the Sherman can be very, very useful if you, you know, don't tech up. You get the Sherman out first and then tech up later once the Sherman to claim some territories. So I think it's worth waiting for still. Uh, there's nothing in the industry that's any use <laughs> until 4 CP, really. Um, so it's a good idea to still wait and not dive in straight away, but it looks like we're going to see... Uh, it looks like we're going to see Windustry. Windustry, that is pretty hype there, in fact. So yes, it's a very odd game so far. I mean, Loveness has had that happen to him a few times recently in high-profile games. The snipers had a lot of pressure put on it in in the start. Do you remember the sniper knife fight oh, between Bond? Yeah, let's not go into last week's sniper game where even I believed it was a fake game. <laughs> yeah, well that's why I went quiet. Just I was like, is this a fake game? <laughs> yeah, the thing is, is that um, you know, it's they're long days. Players have been playing for ages. Things like this happen when two heavyweights come together. You know, this, the funnest things come about, and um, you know that was just unfortunate. Yeah, it wasn't one of those things that can happen. You and never expect Moz and Nagats to get oh. the RNG on those shots. Combat engineers go down. The conscripts manage to pick up the uh, Rock Nine flamethrower. The Grens putting the damage in regardless, though. Helped in kind by the uh, sniper. Loveness being incredibly careful. I really like, by the way, that he's got two snipers. He's microing two snipers on either side at the moment, constantly adjusting the cover positions. This is a lot of micro to be putting, uh, you know, and basically flicking between uh, two different areas and, and still uh, gaining the right kind of micro. It leaves him open to make some pretty big mistakes as well. It leaves a huge investment into snipers right now. You know, we've, we've hit above the 1k mark into snipers. It leaves him wide open to a fast T70, and the tank of your battalion commander is coming up right now. Um, no packs on the field, two snipers could be really detrimental to Loveness if that were to happen. Well, there isn't even a tier 2 up for Loveness right now, so um, the best option he's going to get is to go mobile defence, and if he gets forced into that... Some interesting mines out as well for Jove. He's put them in interesting positions, I quite like it. I like the oblique angles of mines sometimes, they can really catch their opponents by surprise. I really like his mind psychology because one thing he hasn't done is lay them uh, aggressively. A lot of them are played defensively and in a way that's really good because they're very unlikely to be caught out by chance and you know if you don't see mines on the front line you may opponent hasn't built any. So uh, it's likely that those mines at the rear are going to pick up squads that are pushing a bit. Yeah that's a very good point indeed. Uh, Maxim being pushed away, Conscript being pushed away. It's a it's a pretty tepid encounter right now, which always spells to me that we're going to be seeing a, a rather big flurry of activity after that. Here we go. We've got the T70 light tank building. That is one of those shock units that can really kind of um, set the the embers alight. It's got a Soviet urban assault, by the way. <laughs> Point north. Probably going to do some serious damage to this Grenadier squad if they get in that building. Oh, straight through the window. No, they dart back out of it. Go around the corner. Do not want to stay in the bonus damage from the flames. Jump back in. Jump back out. This is an unreal uh, contest right there. Good micro from Loveness trying to get away from the urban assault conscripts. Here it comes, that peppy little light tank. Not to do too much uh, camera work, but I do know there's not much going on right now so I can afford to do it, don't worry about it. Snipers open up on the conscripts by the way and they try and oorah and repeat their trick from earlier. Moz and Agats do have that uh, trail off after 25 range. So not the great, just long range specialists. Cruz would be proud of me for knowing that. 
So that's T70 down. He's going to require a pack and he's getting one. So, But the T70 does have a window of opportunity for op to operate within. I think it still has a reasonable window of opportunity when it's out on the field, to be honest, because uh, the pack is outmaneuver, especially with the uh, four conscripts he's got. Opportunities to walk up to the pack guns, um, basically, you know, burn them or prevent them from actually getting close enough to do any damage to the T70s. T70 is just a great unit on this map because it can bounce north to south and so quickly. Uh, it's a great point defender. Uh, 80 gun does not have that kind of responsiveness. No, that's uh, that's a good point. And T70, especially in the capable hands of Jove, can really micro around the uh, the skirmishes there. Urban assault conscripts being pushed away. Snipers on nine and six kills, 15 in total. So n not quite there to paying for themselves quite yet. But I'm sure that loveness will make it. So we'll have an over under bet, Dan. Uh, combined kills between two snipers, 60 over under. Which one are you going to take? Under. Under again. Yep. Jesus. What do you reckon? You reckon Jove's going to really just uh, find a way to counter them, rush in somewhat? Well, he's already knocked one out. <laughs> yeah, true, true. But uh, you know, never, never put it over past Loveness. Oh, nice uh, mine there, put there just in the bushes. Loveness is never going to spot that, even possibly with minesweepers. <laughs> very well concealed. Go oh, very, very luckily got a, a squad out last minute. Conscripts, the snipers, two of them are about to get the finishing blow. Oh, right. Squad, it was the latest of retreats. I um, see that now. Interesting though, near triple cap has been in uh, for a while. In fact, there's only the one in the middle that isn't capped, so Lovenest is starting to lose some serious VPs. Yeah, it's not looking good for the German right now. Jove is being rather strong. Interestingly, I think you'll note, I know obviously the, uh, the players are very separate from their uh, 80 years ago predecessors, but uh, Lovnest, the German, is playing the Germans, and Jove, the Russians, is playing, guess what, Dan? That's right, yeah, the uh, Brazilian army. And he's playing the Russians, of course. This mortar is going to be a bit of a pest, especially against snipers. I know it's not hit anything quite yet, but it'll always keep them second guessing, keep them dancing. Well, it's not the only benefit of having the mortar there. The good use of a smoke barrage, you'll be able to creep up on a like you know up on any sniper basically, especially with those molotovs. Uh, it's going to be really good for dislodging support weapons if he decides to use it that way. LMG sustained fire on these conscripts behind the sandbag fighting position. Trying to cap that central point and keep Jove in the ascendancy in terms of victory points. Would you? It's kind of phenomenal at this stage of the game, really. Uh, Loveness, if he knows where he's quite going at the moment. Uh, he definitely needs to work on the resources because that's going to be one thing that, that pulls him out. Otherwise, he will be forced oh. into mobile defense and he's uh. really resisting it at the moment, you Dude. can tell. That was cool, that was. It made it look like he was going to uh, attack the snipers. Instead, he molotov the MG42 and escaped with one conscript firing still. Pack 40 opens up against the T70. All the while, the Grenadier is pushed away. Snipers, to update you, 14 and 15 kills, respectively. It's a hell of a lot. So they're more than halfway there to the 60 total. I think you're going to lose that particular over under bet, Dan. Maybe. Uh, you could actually tell that Love Nest was under a bit of pressure there because he actually missed using the incendiary on that retreating squad. Oh, right. Um, okay. He would have been able to wipe that and uh, he actually went for it at the end. But, but didn't c catch you because it would have been out of range by that point. That's interesting. Okay, so fuel count. Love Nest 167, Dan. Jesus Christ. Um, look, Jove 140. So these guys are going to have big options available to them in the immediate future. Well, I'm I'm ignoring about that because with Love Nest, um, his stack of fuel kind of comes from not building anything, <laughs> to be honest. Yes. Um, you know, there's no scout cars or anything like that. Uh, Jove's fuel comes from having map control and pretty much being, you know, teched up to tier three, oh. potentially going straight into tier four if he wants. Uh, he's got loads of options. Still has the option to bring out industry and just. Whack out loads oh, of there's a dangerous mine here for this Grenadier, Dan. They're already on low health from one T70 shot. Oh, one man remaining. Will the T70 go for the final kill? No, it won't. Just managed to get around the shot blocker. And that's the advantage of picking off against something and then it hitting a mine. It does so much more damage than a fresh squad. Neutralizes the central victory point. 
Love Nest is having to go into the, the munitions, try and cap that. He's got to focus on victory points sooner rather than later. He's nearly about to 250. Half his ticker count dissipated. Urban assault conscripts. <laughs> Love Nest is actually pushing back fairly reasonably, I think. The, the, the two snipers are really doing some work now. All about this capping, he needs to get on control of the capping really and just build up those resources. Uh, Joe's focus as well, you can just tell Joe's focus is this um, great, it's a really great push on three. He's holding v, uh, three VPs in the early game, Loveness now on 250 remaining. Look at this uh, from really, really uh, Loveness by the way, he's capping the circle just on the very epicenter, uh, very outskirts rather of the circle. Because he knows there might be a demo or a mine there, so that's such clever play from Loveness. And they're the little tiny things that make him be able to consistently win in a RNG orientated game. Uh, you know, players like to think of Company Heroes as possibly not a competitive endeavour, but of course it is. And they don't understand that the reason that these top level players win time and time again is because they play the odds in their favour and make every situation uh, a beneficial one for them. And that's just a little example of just that kind of thinking in action. Even though there wasn't a mine or a demo there. <laughs> Windustry! <laughs> <laughs> yes! Windustry chosen, and it's all downhill from here. You might as well GG now. <laughs> well, Industry's gonna be really good. I'm actually keen to see if Drove's gonna use the uh, fuel drop and then just blast out some tier 4. I mean, Katusha's here would just be absolute catastrophe for Loveness. Uh, Loveness goes for mechanized, and um, yeah, I mean, I guess mechanized could work here. I guess is that he's saving for Command Panzer 4 first before anything. And then he'll consider to tech, provided that he gets some of his uh, resources back with that. But he's getting out tech very, very fast right now. At least he's going to have map hacks very shortly with the spotting scopes on whatever vehicle he manages to get out first. Most likely, as you say, the nine command point command tank. <laughs> Maxim sprints into the garrison. That's just Jove trying to make use of his time advantage right now because the time is in on his side. Using the T-70 to cap with recon mode and the north keeping the VP pressure on. Big mortar round hits both snipers. Does not, however, do the damage required. It's a good job that Loveness moved them because it could have been very perilous otherwise. T-70 getting aggressive, moves past the pack. Going to walk into a Faust though. He's going to have to dart out of there and go between the church. Otherwise, he's bang out of this. Is he? Will he be able to take out this extra squad mate on the pack? Yes, he does. Alright, he's got infantry coming in because he needs to support this T-70 now. It's managed to decrew the pack. Stan's laughing. What's making you laugh, Dan? It's just the T-70 on the AT gun. I can't believe it. It's wiped it twice. It's brilliant. <laughs> um, <laughs> great. And again, Loveness is just forced to go for this con like constantly. That's going to be three squads that have attempted to take that and are going to be wasted. A lot of manpower expended on that one recruiting situation. Has he got the disc gun in? Helping him out. Yes, he has. This Panzer Full Command Tank is going to be in a little bit of peril. Will it penetrate the T-70 on its last shot? Stub nose. Doesn't quite kill the T-70. Has got crew repairs. And here comes the KV-8, though. KV-8 is attacking the sports we weapons with reckless abandon. And a very high temperature output there. Grove's in a very, very good position right now. Um, a very, very good position. He is indeed, he's also got... Yes, he's going to kill the pack with the Ziscon, that is brutal. No, he's going to walk past it and possibly cap the pack for himself. That would really be uh, kind of a nail in the coffin moment, I think, if he manages to grab that pack as well. Oh. Uh, pack on mid and and north VP, perhaps, you know, or even just covering the fuel with disaster for Love Nest. Uh, he's not going to be able to really attack the south with what he needs because if he moves his army down south it's going to get countered very very easily. Maybe even base push. So. Oh, here comes the KV-8 against the snipers and the Grenadier. There's nothing to stop this KV-8 right now. You just saw the Faust didn't even damage its engine because it's not even been hit yet. Ricochets a shot from the Panzer Full Command Tank. Love Nest is pushed back. He's penned back and there's not much way out that Dan or I can see right now. I think, yeah, I'm kind of waiting. A, a guess Joe maybe looks like he's going to go straight into KV2, perhaps. Otherwise, we may have seen uh, the tier 4 structure go up. It's been the case so far. So, we might be seeing that set up in the middle of the map. 
You really have to ask yourself at that point, what can Loveness do to beat that? Well, um, he could maintain the fetal position and cry, but this is Loveness we're talking about, and he's not that kind of player. Either he GG's, or he knows it's a winnable situation and he carries on. So right now, he feels it's a winnable situation. That's the kind of player Loveness is. Well, there's still time, and uh, anything can happen in this game with time. Uh, there's a lot of unpredictable events that go on. But, um, yeah, this is so strong for Jove and a triple cap again as well. He's held this triple cap from the start of the game. There's, there hasn't been that bounce that we've seen in, in a lot of games today, um, where things go back and forth. It has been pretty much fourth and fourth for Jove. Um, and he's just, he continues to go <laughs> straight oh. on, although T70 might hit a telemine if it decides to push, but... Good just there, thought, there. Dan, just just as a quick aside, we do currently have 900 people not participating in Make Love Not War, but doesn't it start, did it start today? Yeah, it started a... Okay, so everybody, go and open up a skirmish game in your PC, alt-tab and watch the rest of this final, then watch NA, and just stay alt-tabbed, we need to beat these Total War Boys. Oh, uh, no, just carry on watching us then, it's fine. <laughs> Pretty sure skirmish <laughs> counts, mate, doesn't it skirmish count? Um, I don't think so. I thought it was the auto match game. But, oh, I might be wrong about that. But well, whatever. I have to do it then. I'm sure we'll beat Total War anyway. Oh. There's a lot of mines in the centre here, so the Panzer IV Command Tank gets aggressive. It's going to have a hell to pay for it. We've got uh, incend sorry, the armor piercing rounds of the uh, MG42 opening up. Not doing too much damage. The T70 manages to get out of there. That thing has Veterancy 3, by the way, so hype for that unit. Conscript goes down to double snipers. So this is Love Nest. He's staying in it, Dan. He's trying to claw his way back into this. Well, there's still time. There's still opportunities for him to do that. Uh, question is, I mean, he's actually got enough fuel now that he probably could take up something. Maybe go for a Panzer IV at the best right now. Uh, he needs to do something quickly. Okay. I'm not sure that this was the right decision over mobile defense, to be honest. So custom games do count, by the way, so you can do that if you want to participate and watch ESL all night with the NA tournament brackets. But to be honest, we, we can afford to give uh, Total War a little bit of a, a head start, because they have lost heavily the past two years, and we will probably get our DLC for free, but, you know, just to be safe and sorry, but we need to hit it hard after today. As the flames from that urban assault conscript. I mean, how many kills has that thing got? 12 and counting, but that's good for a conscript. Double sniper team getting aggressive coming into the center. The T-70's nearby, so they don't want to get too far forward. Another pack coming out for Love Nest. Isn't it so strange seeing Love Nest slow on the back foot? <laughs> yeah. Well, he's um, such a player that either wins heavily or kind of says, okay, GG, next game. You know, he's, he's, he's that kind of player in my mind. He's so efficient, so brutally proficient that you never really see him on the back foot, to be honest. Oh, there's a mine right by this MG42 with the KV-8 firing on it. This could be dangerous on retreat. Oh, just skirts it. Oh, the, the flames take it off anyway, and the new pack opens up on the KV-8. 50 points remaining. 50 points remaining, triple cap engaged. Dan, how many seconds of play is that? Uh, well, it's just under a minute, to be honest. It's, it's, the game is 1vp per second at the moment. Loveness, you can see, is absolutely desperate to go for the vps, and that's actually playing to his disadvantage, because losing them rapidly, um, and trying to take as many vps as he can off of Joe, but Joe once again beats a player with like 470 vps to secure what is a, the best chance at faction selection in a game 3. Oh, oh. looking good. And those mines, man, the mines are now being brutal. Taking out the mortar that was desperate to take that VP. KV-8's watching off the southern VP. You've got the T-70 and the Zisk gun in the vicinity of the northern VP. It's not looking good for the German in this particular situation. He's got 12 victory points remaining. Looks very likely that Jove is going to win this with 473 victory points. Write them down, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, that was a really good, um, really good play from Joe from the start, to be honest. Uh, that that t takedown of the sniper was crushing. I mean, that really probably affected the game. Oh, two victory points remaining. Oh, 
They go out regardless of the Southern Victory Point Grenadiers right now. And uh, there you go, Jove wins a 473, so more than likely going to have um, Victory Point control unless, you know, Loveness wins with more than 473 Victory Points in the Ace game. I forgot to look at the stats, my bad, never mind. But yeah, it's looking good.